Hello all, today I'll be showing you how I went about installing my Gigabyte Titan Ridge 2.0 Thunderbolt card into my Gigabyte Z390 Ultra motherboard. They have upgraded to the 2.0 uh, as the Z490 uh, motherboards are now out for the new Intel chipsets. I'll also be going through how I went about installing and setting up the PreSonus Quantum 2626 audio interfaces. Um, both of them just using the two ports of the uh, Gigabyte Thunderbolt card. Um, from my understanding, Asus or Asus uh, have just bought out a new um, Thunderbolt card also. Um, it's to do with the Z490 motherboards. Um, I'd like to think that using Gigabyte and Gigabyte, I should hopefully get good connection um, without any issues as hopefully it's been well and truly tested by the Gigabyte company. I guess we'll uh, soon find out. Okay, without further ado. Okay guys, I've already gone ahead and installed the card into the computer as obviously it's going to be a bit difficult to be filming while installing. Um, it is in a PCI Express slot running at times 4 There's no point going any higher as uh, from my understanding it doesn't actually run any higher than that anyway. Okay, let's go through some cabling. That cable at the very back there that you can see, the black one, it runs to the header, the Thunderbolt header on, on your motherboard. Um, they do come with two connectors, so obviously if you've got a different style connection, it will allow for that. The next one you can see just beside the uh, two red plugs is for the USB. Uh, just plug it into a, an empty spot on your motherboard as well. It does take two, there's two of them, uh, PCI power. Um, now, I'm not sure why two, but it's I guess uh, it does run at 100 watts. Uh, can feed up to 100 watts on Thunderbolt cables. So it must be something to do with feeding so much power, I assume. Um, you know, especially when you've only got 650 watt um PSUs, um, you should be probably careful on what size PSU you have while running this card, um, especially if you are running something at 100 watts, plus your video cards, plus your coolers, plus your fans, um, yeah, you don't want to max it out. Um, obviously, for the install, everything's in the instructions within the, in the box anyway, I uh, just thought I'd give you a quick rundown on how I went about installing it. Okay, so um, once you've installed, obviously just go to the Gigabyte website um, so you can download the latest driver. Um, by the way, that's just a little bit of what comes with the card. Uh, just showing you the, the cables and the speeds and the specs. Uh, but just jump on if you're really interested. Obviously just go to the Gigabyte website yourself. And you can figure it out. Um, yeah, so just click the support. Um, and it does say that it only runs at win on Windows 10, by the way. Um, you can only choose Windows 10. Uh, and yeah, just download this driver and install it. Um, then after installing, obviously I just went over to um, my device manager, just opened up the device managers to make sure that it was actually in there. Um, so in system devices, go all the way to the bottom, and um, you will see that it says Thunderbolt controller. Um, and also in software components, Thunderbolt. Um, yeah, so I know that it's installed. Okay, next step about to come up. Did have a bit of an issue once I uh, connected my cables with the uh, PreSonus. Basically, I just did one at a time, but they had this solid red light. Um, I tried everything once I booted Windows and just could not get it to work. Um, cables I'm using are these StarTech ones. I wanted some decent length ones. They're two meters. There's the product code. Now, so I've got a, um, from a bit of advice from Rick from PreSonus. I have got a word clock. Uh, syncing the two together um, which I'll go into a bit later um, 
they're both using we've got two ports used as you can see down here two ports being used for the fire wire cable um, okay so let's have a look so anyway I watched a video a little while ago about how to set this up now I thought I had it right but as I said nothing happened so under this settings this again this is on the gigabyte board you got this Thunderbolt configuration so you click this and you got all this up here right I thought okay well I followed everything that the instructions have said from other videos so you go into here just make sure this force power is enabled and yeah okay thought that'd be it no didn't work so I tried this Thunderbolt USB support I've still got enabled at the moment but um I don't think that that is actually what got it to work what I think actually got it to work was going in this Thunderbolt configuration and then where this level security was it was actually on, on user authorization now to me I went well why do I need security for Thunderbolt for using audio interfacing and I was like well I don't so as soon as I hit no security that's when I got the uh, the green lights the blue lights should I say to say that everything's uh, running smoothly so um, yeah as soon as I did that away we went mind you that took me a good hour to figure that out um, it was driving me nuts I thought it must have been the cable or the card um, I had no idea whatsoever but um, yeah so as soon as, as soon as I did that off we go everything worked um, and we got sync on both the units obviously I just did one at a time so I could do the firm the firmware upgrades on each unit first um, so just follow the instructions on how to do that yourself um, but yeah once once I did that um, everything worked perfectly so I thought I'd touch a little bit more on the uh, BNC connectors that I used so um, I just do have a generic one three foot uh, apparently if you're trying to word clock the smaller the cable the better um, I suppose I can understand it just means the signal can sync between the two even quicker so anyway I've used um, Nutrick connectors here there is the model NB and C 75 BL P7 that's what I decided to go with obviously there's other varieties out there um, and then I've just used Canaray um, cabling there it is LV 61s is the is the model uh, Canaray cable um, it's nice and flexible compared to most cables um, and it seems pretty decent um, so yeah you can see that you know now I've just made what just over six inch um, shorter the better okay so the two units are now synced working together perfectly um, this is the newer serial number that's the older serial number the word clock is going from the out of the newer to the in of the older serial number um, I don't know if that's right or wrong that's just how I've done it uh, one thing I did find last night when I was mucking around with these, trying to get them to work originally through the BIOS, once I reset, these lights would uh, stay a solid red again on boot up all the way through to Windows loading. And I couldn't understand why, so I just re turned them off at the back of the unit. Uh, then they would sync. Uh, this morning I've uh, come down and turned them on first, turned the computer on and they synced without me having to do that. The workaround that I had last night was, as was booting, um, just after I'd gone through the bias stage of boot, I would then just turn them on, the lights would start flashing blue. As soon as Windows starts, um, they would become a solid solid uh, sync. So just a word of advice, if you do get a red light, do try those things uh, before getting extra support. Okay, let's go to universal control. So this is what the universal control looks like. You got the two two of them here um, now when you do originally load up you do just have it looks like this so again you do need to go into clock source and then sync at 48 um, it's a bit annoying that I have to do that every single time I know that it seems like a five second job but 
every time I start the computer, I'm going to have to do that because it doesn't save the settings. I'd like to be able to go up to settings or something or file and save as, um, which would be fantastic. Um, update firmware, let's talk about that one quickly. Okay, so if you're going to update, please disconnect one of the units. So there's only one quantum showing. Um, you do have to do one at a time. So just make sure you follow the instructions on how to do that. Um, it's pretty simple, but just please follow exactly what they say there. Otherwise, you could end up with a dead unit. Options. Uh, I got general. So under that is enable optimized presonus power plan for Thunderbolt audio streaming. Next one's appearance. Network MIDI. Um, I'm not sure what that's about. I'll figure that out one day, but I'm not too interested at the moment. Um, and this one was important to me. So Windy Windows device media. I think that's what WDM stands for. It was on my last PreSonus Fire Studio projects. And obviously I had to adjust that to be able to listen to anything running on the computer that wasn't within the door itself. So like if I was watching something on YouTube or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, I'd be able to listen to that through the device. Um, now, you still can. There's no issues. You just got to go down, open up your, um, your speaker, and then they're all listed here again. Okay, so you got the main out, you got ADAT, speed ifs, line outs, and you got another line main out. Obviously, because you got two devices connected, you can choose. Um, yeah, so that's that's just how you run it. Um, just a quick talk about how 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 the speed is on this thing. Um, I use Bandlab um, or Cakewalk. I've always used Cakewalk products. Um, just can't get my head around using anything else because I've always used it, so um, it's familiar to me. Um, so I do get 1.2 millisecond round trip on a block size of 16. So ex extremely fast. Like you you're never going to hear. It. I know they say under one millisecond um, for their best, but uh, like I'm pretty happy with 1.2 milliseconds to be honest. Um, and I found that I could chuck on a few effects um, and without too much issue. Okay, so this is just to show a round trip on what I'm currently getting. Uh, running 16 samples, so obviously as low as it can possibly get um, on a sampling rate of 48,000. And I'm um, getting 1.2 milliseconds, so, you know, stupidly fast. Uh, let's take that up to, I don't know, let's go 64, see what happens. Okay, so reported latency has gone up to 3.2 milliseconds. Let's go to 128, see what happens. Uh, 5.8, let's take it up to 5.12 even, see what we get. So there we go, it's starting to jump up pretty high now, so 21.8, so um, obviously if you're using any soft synths or you need uh, direct recording to be able to hear it, um, you, you'll notice some latency there. But uh, yeah, I reckon you could easily run it still at you know 128 without, without too much uh, notice at all. Um, what about if we change the sample rate? Let's have a look. All right, let's change that to, I don't know, let's go 192 or something. See what happens there. <laughs> okay, there we go. Look at that now. So 0.4 of a millisecond. Like, that is insane. So fast. Obviously, the higher the sample rate, um, from my knowledge, uh, the easier there it is for the computer to interpret what's going on. Uh, that's why it is a better latency figure. Obviously recording at such high sample rates though, it's going to take um, take up a lot more room uh, recording sound and 192 is a bit over the top for my liking. I only use 48,000 usually, but, um, but you can see it does make a huge difference uh, with the speed. What about if we take the sample rate up now to 128? What do we get? Yeah, still only 1.6 milliseconds. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty quick. So, yeah, I hope this has helped everyone and um, how to, you know, sync 
to Quantum 2626 together. Okay, bye.